sorry going That's on right. from that because this right. question is just popping in my head because i'm so <laughs> curious so then with that because I, kn- I know what you mean about the fact that you you basically spend the whole day just kind of building yourself up you have to pace yourselves correctly and then when you get to the theater everybody everybody i know without fail has a routine from the moment they're going stage door to the moment they step out on stage what's your routine the moment you get there do you have to do things in order is there kind of are you as OCD as I am? OCD, I'm but like is there kind full of, on OCT with my routine. OCD, but is there kind of bit of superstition going on in there that you have to basically turn around three times to the left and then <laughs> kiss the person next to you before you use it? Were you one of those people? Um, if so, what is it? We want to know. Um, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit. I... Um, I I have to do my the things I have to do. I have to do my own pin curls. And that's for people who don't know, we have to pin curl our hair in order to wear a wig. Mm-hmm. Um I have to do my own. Some leading ladies or like to have other people do it. They have to have their their hair person do it. Once I'm in the theater, once I'm in my dressing room, it's my space and this is me in preparation for what i'm about to do on stage so anybody who comes in my dressing room needs to be on board with the fact that i'm about to go do a big job and so i need to be doing everybody will have to do what my whatever my energy is Mm -hmm. um so yes i pin curl my own hair that's a must i do my own makeup that's a must i learned that during little mermaid i needed to do that because that was my first um, that was my Broadway debut. I didn't know that, um, you know, they have somebody for the leading lady that's like to make it easier. Mm-hmm. Well, I learned through that process that actually for me to get prepared, I need to do it. It's part of my almost like shedding of my Sierra self and I'm in charge of that, you know, and then the wig person puts on. Um, so that's the stuff that I have to do. Um, I make sure and I tell this when I teach too that uh, when when you're younger and you're starting out and stuff, try not to get too attached to things that you have to have in order to get on stage. Because what happens if you don't have that thing? Mm-hmm. You'll suddenly psychologically be like, oh God, I can't because I didn't have the one lozenge or the, you know, like whatever, or I didn't, I forgot to turn three times to let, whatever it is. So try not to set yourself up for, I have to have these things in order to go on stage. I'm somebody who, my dresser, if I'm doing a show, she has my water bottle and that's it. She doesn't have to carry lozenges or any other kinds of like crazy stuff or throat sprays or whatever. Just I just need to know that I'm hydrated and that's kind that's kind of it. So mm-hmm. I try and be as like basic needs as possible. When we were doing Love Never Dies though, Ray, I don't know if you remember, but our director for those that don't know, his name was Jack O'Brien, and he is one of the finest humans you will ever meet and the luckiest cast we were to have him as our director. Absolutely, absolutely. Like you want to listen to him preaching about anything. Like he is so wise. And he said to us, because the show of Love Never Dies was so intense and such an emotional journey and all kinds of stuff. Um, And you had to be so focused on the story that you were telling. And he said to us, and I've never had a director say this, but he said, with this show, as soon as you guys leave your dressing rooms, I want you in character. Mm -hmm. and I'll never forget that like we were tasked with when you walk out that dressing room you are in your space that you need to be you're in your character um so in the wings I'm not messing around like I'm just I am so focused by the time that I've left my room um so I know I'm straying a bit from your question Paul uh but I think that that's helpful yeah I mean you like like you say from the moment that you leave your dressing room you are Christine, your Ariel, you, 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 whoever you are. Did it then take you a while to then, when the curtain comes down, to kind of go back and be Sierra again? Do you have a, like an, an after show ritual as well? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, no, I think um, I tend to need to take a moment for myself is maybe my only ritual. But especially with, with shows where I've been, where the show is very much on my shoulders, 
I'm, I'm on, I'm on. And it's like, as soon as I come off stage, I just need a second. I don't need people. I don't need the rush of things. I need to, I'm also not somebody, and this is very different than our theater people. I'm not somebody who needs to go out for a drink after a show. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people unwind like that. I literally, with Mermaid, I remember I would get in my car, because we have drivers here that you can, that would drive us home. And I would literally just like, you would never think I had just played Ariel. You would just think I have like no personality. <laughs> I was just like, I would just sit in the silence. Mm -hmm. I don't need any more stimulation um, because I've hopefully, if I've done it right, I've just given everything to the stage. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that part too becomes like a lonely life. But it's, yeah, I don't have that thing that is, um, that we have, a, that most performers and artists have that's like night owls and stuff. I don't have that. It's so, it's like weird. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I mean, I think it's different for everybody. I think there'll be similarities. Like, I find it really interesting what you were saying about your makeup because that's, that's the one thing for me that I am super OCD over. Like literally, it's all about my makeup. That I have to do it even, like I hate it if I'm on, doing like a film set thing or whatever. And they want to do it. Yeah, I'm like, please, I, I can do it. Don't do it to me. I hate it when other people do my makeup. I'm so, the same. Yeah, it just feels so weird. So my makeup is like, it's my time. That is that prep time. So I really completely get you with that one. And I'm also, I'm one of those people, like Paul will definitely back me up on this. I kind of really struggle to talk, like talk or engage with other people when I'm in the wings because I'm just... Like I can talk to you just about, <laughs> we always yeah. have, we have a, like a little, you know, don't be rubbish, do it well sort of moment together. Yeah. But then there, there'll be people who can kind of chat and have conversations. And I just, I struggle to do that. So yeah. I'm exactly the same. I definitely, and that partly comes from my tr training since I was a kid in school. And one of the first things they teach you is you don't talk in the wings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that that's getting more lenient now I'm noticing with like like when I was doing like school of rock for example obviously I'm one of the oldest people in the cast all of a sudden and I noticed that a, there's a generational thing um that's very much like people are much more lenient about that and need to be told to be quiet in the wings and stuff and to me it's like this old school reverence and respect for the theater and I always love being in shows where there's people older than me and that have, that I, I uh, look up to. Um, and I take my cue from them too, because they are, they tend to be like upholding the traditions of the theater. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't ever want to lose that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I guess one like tradition thing too, is like to never whistle in the theater. I definitely like, that's I think a thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, and it's like, yes, those are superstition stuff, but I won't do it. I just, and, you know, people now are like trying to get rid of that and be like, oh, whatever, you know, and not care. There was a show that I was involved with and people were like, oh, whatever. And I have a problem with that. It's like, why not just have that reverence, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, absolutely. And so, you know, you just said that you really enjoyed being in cast with when there's people who are older than you, which kind of leads me on to my question, not necessarily about anybody who's older than you, but who would you say is your biggest inspiration? Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm sitting, I have Barbara Streisand framed right here. So I, I anybody, about your, your thing with Barbara. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who knows me knows that Barbara Streisand is my thing. And I always like these framed records I have, but I tend to take a couple of them off the wall, whatever dressing room I am and in, and then I have her in there. She's for sure my biggest inspiration in the theater. Um, I find her work so brave and, um, yeah, she's extraordinary. I had a whole dream, Love Never Dies. I had a framed, giant framed thing in my room of different women um, that I was using to 
focus myself in on to play Christine in that version. So I would, I'm very visual. So I needed to see that stuff, but honestly, I mean, right now my inspirations are people that aren't even in theater. I'm, I think, and you know, it's like these incredible women, it's hard without people going political in their mind when I say this person, but Hillary Clinton for me is a huge inspiration, not politically, but what she dealt, has dealt with and deals with all the time as a woman and as a powerful a woman with something to say, um, she really inspires me. Michelle Obama inspires me. Um, Diana Nyad, the woman who swam from Cuba to Florida um, by herself, so like that inspires me. Brene Brown, who's like the most motivational, amazing. She's a researcher of vulnerability. Um, she inspires me. Um, that's who I really tend to draw from lately. Um, and I find that using things outside of theater, it's like, oh God, this all makes so much sense. Yeah. And to me, it really is the bravery. It's the bravery of people that aren't um, afraid to step into who they are knowing that you're not gonna make everybody like you or happy, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's kind of what we do. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. You you know that whenever you do a show, there's always gonna be some people that love the show and some people that don't like the show. When you do a performance, some people are gonna like your performance, some people are not. It's you're totally right. It's like we go into this knowing that what we do is so subjective. Yes. Yeah, we do it anyway. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, because there's something with inside of it. I mean, we can talk about the climate that we're in right now. Nobody's ever been in this position before where the world is on hold, basically. And Broadway is shut down. The West End is shut down. School shows are shut down. Every perform, you can't perform anywhere unless you're by yourself. And I've been teaching a lot online for different companies and stuff that, cause I don't know how to teach someone how to do voice, but I can teach master class or coach. And I've been starting my classes by, with these people from all over the world and on our Zoom screens, you know, just like little Brady Bunch things. And I start and I say that, that there's no place to perform right now. There's no Broadway, there's no West End that. But you've all signed up and are here you are all here because you want to do the work today for some reason. Yeah. And that's just worth noting. That's like, let's acknowledge that there's something with inside of us, no matter what it is, it's our purpose is screaming to us. Mm -hmm. So here we are, even this conversation, it's important to us to do have this conversation because we're still wanting to uh, feel inspired and bring inspiration to people, even though there's nowhere to technically nowhere to do what we do. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, we're a strong people, especially as artists. And we, no matter what happens, we will still find a way to do what we do. Yeah. Amen.